correct answer. Yes, but um, hi, everyone. I just wanted to say happy Mental Health Awareness Month. And we're going to be starting this first Zoom call this first Sunday with our guest speaker, Angie Hensley. She's uh, from the Counseling Center, um, and we'd love to have her have talk with us today. Um, so, yeah, I'm Maddie Lippman. I'm the Internet Event Coordinator for You Matter. And I'm happy to introduce myself. I'm Angie, and um, I'm a therapist at the Counseling Center. I also coordinate the You Matter program. Um, so I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Maddie. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and so I'm just going to give a little background to what we're doing and what we have next rest of the semester, and then we'll go into Angie doing her little um, talk about tools and tricks to help get mental health. Um, so May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and so You Matter is all about mental health advocacy. So we decided to put on a couple events for you guys. Um, so what we're doing is doing both live streams and Zoom calls. The live streams are going to be promoting what the end of the month, end of the week Zoom calls all going to be about. Um, each week is going to be different, different aspects of the counseling center. So this first week is the counseling center itself with the therapist, with Angie. The next week is going to be with our peer coach program. And the last week is going to be with the internship, the You Matter internship program. Um, and so but as I said, it's going to be both on the Wednesday with the live stream and on the Sunday, the Zoom call at the end, um, just to promote, you know, coming to these Zoom calls. Um, with that being said, I want to give it off to Angie to talk a little bit about what she does, how the counseling center runs, and give her uh, her tips and tools. Cool. Well, sure. Yeah, so um, I guess just to um, introduce myself, um, I am kind of a new, you know, transplant to Chico. I started last year in January, so it's been a little over a year that I've been here, and um it's interesting because, um, you know, just as I was transitioning into this role at the counseling center, we went into the pandemic. And um, so then we're doing everything from home. So that's been an interesting journey. Um, we've been doing all of our therapy sessions from home. Um, and part of what's been really cool about that for me is that I've been able to do a lot of um gardening and like working with the land at my house. I grow veggies and herbs and um, all kinds of fun stuff and make little herbal tinctures and teas and salves and stuff like that. So that's been really, really fun for me. Um, I've also, you know, it just around this time too, we, I started um, helping out with the You Matter program, which for those of you that don't know is, um, the kind of the outreach arm of the counseling center. So um, Maddie runs that and um, Baylor um, does the um, socials and um, the website. And so it's been interesting for us to kind of find ways to engage students and like connect and build community, um, you know, virtually because we haven't been able to do any kind of in-person events and stuff like that. Um, and so it was really challenging for all of us to kind of come around and like, okay, how do we, you know, Zoom is not the same as if we were, like, all hanging out in the same space, you know, so that's been a little challenging, but we've been able to do a lot of really fun things, um, so that's been really cool. Um, I'll talk a little bit about services at the Counseling Center, so I'll, some students don't know this, um, but, you know, you have access to therapy uh, through the Counseling Center as a part of your um, student services, and um, and I'll just say, like, so ordinarily what happens is somebody will get on the website and schedule, if it's their first time, they'll schedule an intake on the website, or you can just call and talk to Sandy or Sonia. They're the two that answer the phone, and they're both really cool and very nice. And um, and your first appointment is usually, like, an intake, so it's, like, um, the counselor that you get paired with will usually ask you like more in-depth questions about your history and, you know, kind of what you've been experiencing. And this could be anything from, you know, a lot of students get um, anxious and stressed out, you know, um, especially around this time of the semester when it's like uh, finals and am I going to pass my classes and graduate and all this. 
Um, so, you know, it could be something like that or um, depression, like some students will get into a kind of a funk and feel really um, down. So that's something that we see. Um, or it could be other things like a traumatic event that's happened, um, um, loss and grief. Sometimes that's something, you know, if somebody's died or you've had a breakup or something like that. So these are the kinds of things that um, we ordinarily see. Sometimes people get suicidal. And so we'll work with that, like, if, you know, what's happening for somebody if they don't feel like um, being alive anymore and, you know, digging into that and, and helping them um, move through it. So those are the kinds of things. And then we ordinarily will people, you know, in the beginning of the semester, it could be like um, weekly or every other week. But as the semester goes on, we can usually see students a little less frequently. Um, during the summertime, um, because there's, we go from having 12 counselors to four counselors. Um, we don't do individual sessions like that, but we do have at any point, somebody can call the counseling center and press two to, if they're having a crisis. So if something's happening for somebody that they really need to talk to somebody, we're always available. And, um, the counseling center number is on the website, um, but it, I'll, I can, I'll say it, it's uh, 530-898-6342, and then you press extension to any time to talk to a counselor. And we're also doing, over the summer, some very cool groups, which I just want to say a little thing about groups, just to begin with. I started my first um, online group last summer, um, and I was a little kind of worried, because I'm like, oh, how's this going to go? But I was noticing a lot of students were feeling super anxious. And so I thought I would do a little support group for people with anxiety. And so we started over the summer and that has gone, I mean, for a little minute there, I had to start a second group because there were so many students. So um, that group has gone on and it's really, it's like a mixture between like psychoeducation and, um, you know, processing and like kind of talking about, and getting support. But what I notice about group is that it really helps people feel less alone and um, more connected. And even with Zoom, we were able to get very intimate and like, you know, talk about things. I think it's sometimes easier to talk with somebody that you don't know at all about deep and personal stuff, um, especially in a safe environment where you feel like you're not going to be judged. And then there's an experience of like, like just hearing other people talk about some of the things that you are experiencing, it's like, oh, it takes the air out of me. Almost like there's, whoa, this is a thing. It's not just me, you know, type of experience. So I love groups. And it, and and it's not just like me doing work with the students, but it's like we kind of all create this like supportive environment. And so a lot of times the students are the ones that are supporting one another. So super cool. So we have four groups. Um, I'm doing two, and my coworker, um, Courtney, who's a psychologist at the center, is doing the other two. Um, so the ones she's doing, one of them is called Radical Self-Acceptance, um, or no, Radical Self-Compassion. And um, as I talk a little bit more about some of the things with mental health, you'll see why it's really important to have a compassionate attitude towards yourself. But um it's just really helping students to work with that inner critic. So like the voice that can kind of be critical and, um, you know, and practicing some alternatives to that being compassionate um, with yourself. And then um, she's also doing one that's called peace of mind. And it's, so it's for just reducing stress, reducing anxiety and some tools for that. Um, and in both of those groups, there's some psychoeducation, so it's kind of like teaching things, but also some process time. The two that I'm doing, one of them is a mindfulness group. And um, so a lot of times people get mixed up between mindfulness and meditation. Mindfulness is just the practice of being aware in the present moment. And you can do that a lot of different ways. One of the ways is through meditation, like closing your eyes and, you know, either paying attention to your breath or paying attention to your senses. But there are other things that you can do too in a mindful way, like going for a mindful walk, making a mindful pot of soup, you know. So 
there's all different kinds of ways to practice mindfulness. And the idea is that we want to bring mindfulness more and more into our lives so that every moment is a mindful moment, um, which helps, you know, so much. So that's one group. And then the other one I'm doing is an emotional intelligence group. So it's all about like being able to recognize feelings, just kind of identifying and knowing how you feel and then holding and handling your feelings in a way that's healthy. So it's not like repressing your feelings or blah, over emoting without any kind of containment, but just that balance of like, okay, I can feel my feelings. And one of the things that I really believe is that our feelings, I feel like this as a therapist, I'm kind of like um, an advocate for feelings. Like I'm always like feelings have rights too, you know? but they have their own intelligence, you know? So there's a way that even if something is hard, like feeling so sad or angry, that it has some intelligence and something that it's trying to do for you. And so we want to kind of explore that. So we'll do that and also talk about how feelings either positive feelings or kind of maybe what we might think of as less appealing feelings have to do with your needs either being met or unmet and then problem solving around, oh, what are ways that we get our needs met? Um, and then communication stuff, because a big part of being emotionally intelligent is having good connections. So we'll talk about relationships and stuff. So those are the four groups that we're doing. And um, Baylor is going to be putting those, if she hasn't already, up on the website very soon. So you can get on there and check them out. You can always reach out to the counseling center by email or calling and, and ask about them because we have them all scheduled. So anybody's welcome to join those. Um, so I guess that's that. Um, I wanted to just talk a little bit about some things that people can do to, um, to work with their um, mental and emotional wellness outside of going to therapy. Um, so I, I'll just say a little bit about that. But first of all, I mean, does anybody have questions or comments or anything like that before we go into that stuff? No? I wanted to comment on um, – the uh when you were mentioning that groups really help you feel less alone and uh, more connected especially in this virtual time um I definitely felt that way when I participated in group this semester and just yeah it's a really good resource I encourage people to try it out because I know some people are nervous um going into it like talking about their feelings with other people and that's like maybe not something that they've ever done before um or they're not too comfortable with that idea but it honestly gets really easy once you start because then you realize everyone feels the same way as you and it just feels so much more comfortable to let that out and to explore that. Yeah. Thanks, Sonia. I'm, I'm so glad to hear. I feel the same way too. Like I, it just feels super valuable. Norma, were you going to say something? Yes. Um, I just wanted to say that those groups sound so interesting and I don't know. I feel like they're so useful. And as you were just explaining all of them, I was like, oh my God, I can definitely like take advantage of that. And I definitely will. Um, so I just wanted to say that that was a really good choice in groups. Yeah. Thanks. We, we were really thinking about, well, geez, what do we know about what our students are needing? That's usually how we decide what kind of groups we want to do. Um, it's just like, what are we seeing and what could students use? And so I really felt like, geez, these are good ones. Um, as we go back, and one thing I'm going to just give people a little sneak preview for fall. We do so many cool, when all the counselors come back, we do so many cool um, support groups. So there's one for people with bipolar. Um, we do one that's a gender. Um, and it, SE does it. It's called gender. And it's discontent. Um, so it's kind of exploring, you know, gender and um, we have a queer enough group for folks that identify as queer. Um, there are all kinds of stuff. Um, Roxy does. These are all therapists at the counseling center that are totally cool. Roxy does one for people that have experienced sexual trauma. Um, so we have all kinds of really cool groups in the fall. And I and my coworker, Melissa, are going to be facilitating um, a 
an eco therapy group, which I've wanted to do for so long. And now we can be in person. And um, it's just about like getting out into nature and um, kind of using um, like our connection with our bodies and with the land um, as medicine. So we're very excited about that. So people can look forward to that group in the fall. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about, first of all, um, this thing about, um, you know, stress and anxiety and just give you a couple little tools, okay? So I don't want to get too nerdy about this, but I think sometimes to understand a little bit of the science of this helps us to engage in our wellness in a different way. So I'm just going to go for it. Um Essentially, like when we're um, stressed out or anxious, what's happening for us is that we our sympathetic nervous system is giving us, um, it's trying to do us a favor, right? It's giving us some energy to handle a crisis. And that is awesome if we have to, if we're like a, a zebra and we need to run away from a lion that's trying to eat us, right? So it's so helpful because you can get away <laughs> or fight. You know, if you have to, that fight or flight, it's like, if you have to fight, you got to fight. Or if you have to run, you got to run. But for us, usually it's, we're stressed out because of things like, I need to study and I can't focus, or um, I'm just balancing all this stuff with my internship and school and work and blah, 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 right? So it's not helpful to have all of these stress hormones, which is like cortisol, adrenaline in our system. And it will cause things like what we typically think of as stress or some people get it really bad and it's anxiety or a panic attack that comes, right? And so there are things that we can do to help reduce that so that every single day we li we're living our lives in a way that's kind of working on, and this is what I think of as like resilience, right? It's like, preparing for a crisis, um, dealing with a crisis, and then recovering afterwards. Um, so in every, like, every single day, we, there are things that we can do that reduce those stress hormones. And then when we have something that is stressful or anxiety producing, um, we can be inside of it in a different way and then recover from it. So um, one of the ways that we do this is by activating the parasympathetic nervous system. Okay, so that's the rest and digest part. So we could think of the sympathetic as the gas pedal, the parasympathetic is the brake. Okay, so um, we need to press that brake sometimes. So I'm going to offer us a couple little tools that we can use um, and we'll practice those. If you want to just watch me, you can just watch me. Um, if you want to do it with me, you can. Um, but just to say, you know, a couple things about this, like um, I talk a lot about this, but being in nature, even just for 20 minutes will totally make you feel less stressed. So if you can get outside and get in nature, listening to birds and, you know, the nature sounds is so helpful for your nervous system. Um, being in a green space. So I have, if you come over to my house, it looks like it's like Jumanji in here because it's like, you know, like plants everywhere. Um, but green spaces are super regulating to our nervous system. So that's something mindful, a mindfulness practice. And that could be actual meditation or just being in the present moment reduces your anxiety. Okay. And your stress. So these are all things that we can practice all of the time, like being more present. So if you could think about it like this, like, if the difference between you're trying to do your paper for school and your mind is like, oh, my God, you're thinking about this thing that happened and that you're there. And you're also thinking about this other thing that you need to do. Right. See how you're pulled in all the, these directions. And that's stressful versus like being totally with the thing that you were doing right in front of you, which you can kind of come into your body, loosen up, be in that moment in a different way. So mindfulness is very good for your nervous system. Um, <clears throat> getting good sleep, getting exercise, you know, eating good food. These are all things that people don't think of, but it's like basic self-care that can be very helpful for you. So I'm going to do this one is called the triple warmer smoothie. And some of you have done this with me before, but um 
This activates your uh, parasympathetic nervous system. So you could do it with me or you could just watch. We're going to go through it three times. So you just start by um, bringing your hands up to your little eyebrows. And then you just pull, you're sweeping. And you want to do this with pressure that feels good to you. You're sweeping across and then rubbing your temples here. Okay, and remembering to breathe as you do this. And then you're going to go right behind your ears and down the sides of your neck, breathing and just using whatever pressure feels good to you. We're going to go to our shoulders and then just let your hands hang on your shoulders here. Breathing. And then you're going to cross over. And then find that soft little spot that's like right under your collarbone. And you're just either tapping or massaging that little place right there. Breathing. And then with your hands on your heart, just taking a breath. And just letting go. And we'll do this two more times. And you could do it at your own pace. So if there's a part of your body that feels like it wants a little more attention, just attending to that. And this is called the triple warmer smoothie because um, in Chinese medicine, this is known as the triple warmer meridian. And so we're smoothing it out. Plus, I just think it's kind of a cool name. <laughs> Massaging the ear, breathing. And we'll just do this one more time. Just noticing how you feel, if this helps you at all. Some of these, I like to offer a lot of different tools because some tools are helpful to people and they're like, oh my God, I love this. I use it all the time. And then other people are like, meh, that didn't do anything. So it's just like what works with your body. I'll say like when I first started meditating, it took a long time for it to be helpful to me. I kind of felt like I was torturing myself by just, um, sitting. It took a long time before I was like, oh, this is actually relaxing. <sighs> so sometimes these things just practice. And then, so here's another one, is if you just kind of put your hand over your heart and then right in between your pinky and your ring finger, you just tap gently while you breathe in that little spot. The other one. Good. Okay. And then just pausing. Taking a few deep breaths and breathing is super helpful. And so some, a lot of times the one that I really like is like, when you inhale and then your exhale is twice as long as your inhale, that really helps relax you. Okay, so if you could just practice that for a moment. Extending your exhale. And then we'll, we'll do um, two more. Um, so this one, you're just taking your right ear and then you're bringing it down to your, just as much as feels comfortable to stretch your right shoulder. And then you're taking your eyes and you're looking up to the left. Just breathing. And then we'll do the other side. Left ear to left shoulder and then looking up to the right. And you can do that as long as feels comfortable to you. So this one, we're going to imagine that you are up against a, um, a glass window and you, you know, fog it up. And then you're going to take your nose and make an infinity symbol on the glass window. Just a small little one. Remembering to breathe. And just taking a deep breath and exhaling, releasing. 
So those are some little, and you might just even notice like, does it, is anything feel different after doing those? Um, another one I'm not gonna do, um, um, is like, um, okay, so I'm not gonna do it, but I wanna talk about it. Um, shaking, okay, this is something that, um, I, I always like to look at the one thing that I'm like so into is um, watching the natural world and trying to mimic what m mother nature and like animals do that seems to be very resilient. Right. And so one thing that ducks and zebras and a lot of other animals do um, is they shake. And I don't know if you've ever seen like two little ducks kind of get into it with each other and have a little fight. And then afterwards they just go, they like shake it off. And then they're like, kind of their feathers are back. And then they're like cruising along back to normal. So if you get into a really like intense thing where you're like, I'm anxious, you know, if you just like full body, like shake it out and breathe and just, you know, get it out. It could be very helpful for getting rid of some of that extra energy. So that's one. I'm not going to make us do it right now, but like experiment with that when you are in the privacy of your own room or space or whatever. Okay. So any questions about that stuff before I kind of talk about happy chemicals? Right? We talked about the stressful chemicals. Um, okay. So I'm just going to go for it. All right. So um, one of the things that I think is really helpful to think about, because I'm a total hippie, and so I always like to use natural remedies. Um, it doesn't mean I, I, I often talk to my students about getting on medication if they're super anxious or if they're feeling depressed. And I think it's really important for us to understand how we can naturally boost some of these hormones that are good and then reduce some of the ones that are not so good, right? So I want to talk about our, um, the limbic system controls um, the release of um, four um, happy chemicals, we'll say. <laughs> so I don't want to oversimplify it, but they, but they are happy chemicals. Um, one is dopamine, one's endorphin, um, and oxytocin, and then serotonin. So these are all things that we want to have available to us. Um, and um and to to boost right because it, it makes us feel happy um so dopamine is one that we get when we are being rewarded right so it's when you seek rewards um this is where i think i talk to a lot of students about addiction right because something happens where our uh, uh, like our addictions kind of hijack that reward system so for example people that play game video games and they get like it's, i can't stop playing video games you know it's because video games are very reinforcing it releases dopamine it's like well oh, you're doing this thing and you get this reward you're doing this thing and you get this reward oh next level or whatever it is that you're winning gambling that is so uh addictive because and it's the most addictive kind because it's intermittent reinforcement right so you try 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 you just keep trying <laughs> and like it could be a problem right cocaine is super reinforcing it releases all this dopamine it makes you feel really good that's why people have a very hard time to stop smoking cigarettes or stop doing drugs right but you can do this in healthy ways so if you are rewarding yourself and i always talk about this like what are some of the things that you can do to acknowledge something so you do a chunk of work and then you say and now i'm gonna do this one thing that's reinforcing for me you know and just like really seeking rewards and like making sure that you like acknowledge what you're accomplishing this is why i always talk about wins let's start with wins what are we doing well let's what do I always say? Hey, does anybody have a gratitude? Because we want to be reinforcing ourselves and one another about what we are doing that is going well, right? Um, the other is endorphin. So endorphins are really good because endorphins mask pain and it makes you feel super good, right? Um, so some of the natural ways that we um, elevate our endorphins, of course, are um, through um, exercise right? Having sex, <laughs> things that are like 
yay, right? So um, so we want to kind of work with that because it, it'll make us, if we are feeling less pain, then we're enjoying our lives more, right? Oxytocin is what we release that makes us feel safe and connected. Um, it's like a bonding, you know, when they feel kind of connected. So having good connections in your life, touch, like getting healthy touch, um, super important. It releases um, oxytocin um, and, and it makes you feel safe and secure and like, okay, in your, in your body, in your environment. That's why being with people, having relationships where you feel regulated, you know, we're wired for connection. Um, so we want to stay connected to people. That's going to release oxytocin for us. Healthy touch, good conversations with people, um, loving relationships. I like being in therapy that, you know, having that kind of deep connection with somebody or even a, in a group, um, you know, that can make you feel safe and secure and connected. Um, and then the last one is serotonin. And this is kind of like, it's so funny because it's like, you know, in our, it's like, um, social dominance, right? Like people release serotonin when they feel like they have some stature. And, um, a part of this is like evolution, right? It's like, because if you are large and in charge, you're going to be able to reproduce, <laughs> right? Yeah. Good job. You got a nice car or whatever. Um, but, um, you know, whatever. I mean, that's kind of, um, it's like there are very cool ways to feel like you are um, secure socially without it being materialistic, right? Um, so these are ways that we, where if you can see it's going to get in the way if you're super self-critical, right? So going back to that radical self-compassion, like when you're super self-critical, this is hard to produce, right? Because you're just like, I'm not good enough. And I see this a lot in, in a lot of students, like I'm not doing good enough, it's, right? And so you can see how you're re releasing less happy chemicals if you're not really acknowledging and being compassionate and like kind to yourself. So, um, you know, the, part of this is res self-respect, getting respect from others, right? So doing the things that are what I think of as like in line with our values. When you're doing things that are in line with your values, you feel good about yourself, right? And that's going to help you with this. So we'll do, um, is it cool if we just do a quick little self-compassion meditation? Just, it's just, this is like a self-compassion break, okay? So I'll talk us through this. Um, and again, you can do this or you can just watch. That's really cool too. Um, but we're going to start by either, um, Closing your eyes, or if you don't feel comfortable to close your eyes, just um, lower your gaze and just soften your vision and bring your awareness internal. And I like to put a hand on my heart just to kind of connect with my heart and just really feel myself. You could do this, or if you don't want to, you don't have to. Um, and just taking a few breaths here. Feel your bottom on the chair and your feet on the ground. And the first thing that we're going to do is like, just in, if there's any way that you feel like you're struggling or stressed or there's something difficult happening, just kind of calling that up into your heart so that you can feel it. And you're just noticing it. So with your observing self, you're touching in and noticing the part of you that is in pain or suffering right now or struggling. And um, you just want to kind of have a, an attitude of, of loving kindness towards yourself. And then we're going to, the next part of this is extend this out to a human experience. So you're holding this suffering. It's not just a me thing. This is a human thing. So humans suffer in this way sometimes. Acknowledging, ouch, this hurts, and this is a human condition. So holding it in the context of your humanity. Really just feeling all the ways that all the people struggle with, whatever it is that you're struggling with. 
And then finally moving to this place of really holding an intention for lessening that suffering, both in yourself and in others. Just a desire to have a little less suffering. And so one thing I like to say, and you can say this inwardly to yourself as you hold your heart, may I be safe. May I know peace. May I be free from the bonds of suffering. And then we want to extend it out to all people that are struggling. May all beings be safe. May all beings know peace. May all beings be free from the bonds of suffering. I'm just taking a deep breath in. And on the exhale, releasing that. And as you feel ready, you can open your eyes and just kind of check in. I mean, after we do these little tools, so you could go home and practice these. And after we do these, I think it's good to just um, kind of check in and go, oh, did that help me? Or, you know, what do I notice? So let's see, is that all I have? Um, I think that's all I have. Um, but I want to open it up if people um, want to ask questions or, you know, anything. That was awesome, Angie. That was an amazing start to these Zoom calls for the three weeks. Um, I think I definitely took a lot from this meeting in terms of the tools and then even that self-compassion uh, mindfulness is very good. I feel very calm now. Um, but yeah, yeah. I just wanted to put that out there before you had any more questions. I have a question for all of you guys. If um, that open question isn't, uh, it's a little too vague. Um, I wanted to ask how you guys are all feeling, specifically it being, you know, May and it almost being the end of end of the year for school wise, the beginning of summer, um, the end of some some things for you know seniors, the end of something that's been the last four years. I just want to hear from you guys if you feel comfortable and confident about talking about it. Doing pretty good. Um, I'm graduating this year, so it's like a little mixed feelings. If I, you know, the Zoom, I'm kind of getting over uh, my Zoom classes, so I'm pretty happy. But, you know, like they all say, now life begins, but uh, I feel pretty good. And this really helped. Thank you. I'm so glad to hear that. <laughs> Um, congrats to all the seniors. I know we have a few seniors in this group, um, and that's something that we, we really wanted to kind of have this, this set of meetings for. Um, obviously, this is to promote on-campus Wellcat Counseling Center resources, but at the same time, we wanted to, as Angie was saying, give you guys some little tools to bring with you as you continue forward, um, assuming that we're going to have more stresses in life that aren't just college, which is probably likely, um, being able to have these in a little toolkit with you at all times so that when you're not on campus and you can't come and stop in at the counseling center, you can still keep these um, thoughts with you and bring them with you for future use. Um, anyone else want to talk about how they're feeling it almost being summertime and it almost being the close of the semester? Um, so I'm also a senior, I'm also graduating, um, and I also have a mix of emotions. Like I'm very excited, obviously, because like it's been four years, right? Like this has been four years in the making, but at the same time, it's like, I can't really celebrate as I wanted to. And then I'm also just like a little nervous going into like the jobs or like looking for jobs, like after like in within the pandemic or like with during the pandemic, sorry. Um, and I'm also very tired, clearly. Um, I'm exhausted and I have a lot of um, like exams still, but so yeah, it's a mix of emotions, but overall I'm very excited and I'm actually very excited to see what you all have for like the rest of the month and just participate with this because I love 
you matter and I miss you all. Um, but yeah. We miss you too, Norma. Yeah. Um, you were a great, <laughs> great intern last semester. Um, but yeah, I definitely understand that. Um, going into with Ka Chico's stay, I have another question. Um, is Before we do that, <clears throat> Maddie, I just want to say one thing. I, <clears throat> I'm hearing this from both of you, and I, I've heard this from so many students, and I just really want to validate like this experience of it being a mixed bag. Like that, that, on the one hand, you're like, whoa, I'm graduating, this is so awesome. And then at the same time, like I really want to, like it's complicated, right? Because you probably imagined the celebration being different. And so the disappointment of that, but like, how do we, I mean, again, when we kind of talk about the happy chemicals, right? Like how, what are some ways that you can really acknowledge your success and give yourself like, you know, that reinforcement for like, dude, you did it. You graduated, you got your diploma. It's awesome. And at the same time, really acknowledging some of the grief in, and I don't, this isn't going exactly the way that I imagined it. And I don't get to celebrate in some ways, you know, like I want to be able to. So really, I feel that it's complex. And I just have heard that from a lot of students. And so I just want to say like, yeah, dude, that's so valid. Sorry, I just want to say that. No, that's very true. I, I definitely agree. Um, but yeah, when it comes to this, these mixed emotions, kind of, something that a lot of people have mixed emotions about also is just mental health in general. And that's something that we're kind of really pushing for this month, in, spe in specifics, being May, it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, and so I wanted to kind of bring that up for us to kind of talk about and discuss a little bit is about um, what are some thoughts, um, discussions, um, ideas, misconceptions that you all have that we want to discuss about mental health, about therapy, or anything like that which we want to talk about as a group. Um, I think the first, I think that the thing that people don't talk about about therapy is like how awkward it is in the beginning. Like, especially if you've never been to therapy or like you don't really know what to talk about. You're just like there. The awkward silence that happens sometimes. Um, but yeah, I feel like that's one of the things. Yeah, I want to say to to like a part of it is like some people are shy sometimes, right? So it's like they come and then it's like you're with this person you don't know. and he, And it's just like. In person, it's different because I could be like, hey, do you want some tea or blah, blah, blah. You know, it, it's different. But popping in just on Zoom and being like, hi, you're going to talk to this person that you don't know. It's Yeah, it can be incredibly awkward. I try to make it more comfortable and by just like, you know, having some small talk or doing some like joking around with people to kind of help. Be like, it's okay, you know. Um, but that can be really awkward. Another thing is that I think, too, something we don't always think about is depending on our culture um, or our family upbringing, mm -hmm. like, talking to strangers about your business is, like, not cool. <laughs> you know, like, in some families or cultures, it's, like, it's a taboo in a way. So it's, like, you're going to go to this person and, like, just tell them about, you know, your deepest, darkest, but and you don't know them. You know, like, that is really, like, not something that every – um, person feels comfortable with so you're really you know moving through some of that stuff um but I think that you know part of what is awesome about it is like being able to hold some of these things that maybe you've been holding alone or just with one or two other people with somebody that can really help you sort through it it can be such a relief and so I'll often ask like after our first session like hey check in what do you notice after telling me all this stuff? And usually the thing that I hear is like, I feel a little lighter or I feel relieved or I feel a little more hopeful. So just, you know, for what it's worth, I think it's, it's worth um, doing <laughs> like, like powering through the awkward part of it. It's definitely worth it. Like learning how to be vulnerable and just accepting help from others. And um, yeah, it's definitely worth it. Uh, yeah. And, um, yeah, I was just going to piggyback that, yeah, it's really hard over Zoom to kind of 
break through the glass and kind of get to a space where you're comfortable opening up and sharing stuff. Because the way that I was introduced to therapy was at a very young age. And I remember that the way I opened up was that the therapist had toys and mind games in their office that I could play with. And that helped my mind and my, like, help me become more comfortable in the space. And just kind of idly doing something with my hands helped me free up my mind and kind of make it out. So, yeah. Yeah, I love it. That's a good idea, Luke. Maybe I should, like, um, suggest to people when they come to therapy to bring something that they can play with, like some Play-Doh or Silly Putty or something like that. Because I think yeah. you're right. There's something about that that's so – I'm like that, too. You know, I always want to, like – doodle or whatever when I'm like engaged in something so I feel that yeah because it's it's no fun to just like stare blankly at someone you don't know but if you can kind of do something with your hands or just take your mind off of it it kind of helps you open up and feel more free instead of just trapped in this awkward intimate situation yeah I think that's awesome with talking with the different experiences with this kind of thing, mental health. Obviously with You Matter, our whole our whole mission and job is to go and advocate for the destigmatization of mental health to students, to classes, to teachers. Um, and so that's something that we love to do is to, think, to open up and hear everyone's different um, you know, situations. And now maybe we'll be able to add toys to the counseling center and have a little hand, you know, play things or fidget spinners <laughs> just so we could have things to do and, and add on to our own understanding of how people deal with mental health. Um, do we have any more comments on this section talking about just different aspects of mental health? There's this brand called Thinking Putty, and it's like this small, and you could keep it in your purse or backpack. And my mom gives it to me like for every holiday, birthday. She loves giving it out. It's small, and you could do different colors and scents and stuff like that. Ooh, I'm gonna get some of that, Megan. That, thank you, Thinking Putty. That's so cool. There, I remember these little wax sticks, like. It's kind of, I think it's maybe like a Waldorf thing or something. They have those little wax sticks that you can make things with. I, I was trying to remember what those were called, but those mine, are cool. Mine, mine was always like fun, crazy magnets that you can stick together in weird ways. Ooh, that is so those cool. Those are a very good distractor. So cool. Well, yeah. what'd you say? Instead of maybe, or maybe I have attention deficit disorder. <laughs> yeah, you might want to, you might want um, to make an appointment and, and see. <laughs> um, because I think like, um, you know, everybody could use therapy. I go to therapy. I love ther my therapist. It's like, you know, it's good to have somebody to support you and help you. Maddie, did you have any other questions? Because I thought maybe before we could go, it might be fun to um, see if after like hearing all of this, if there's maybe like one little tiny change that people would want to commit to over the summer to like improving their wellness, emotional, mental wellness. I don't have any more questions. I do want to like end the meeting quickly with like talking about the rest of the stuff for the month. Um, but I think that that would be a, a great little ending for us as a group. Okay, cool. So maybe people could think about that. If there's one little tiny thing that you'd be, willing to commit to, to like improve your emotional and mental wellness. And if you wanted to put it in the chat while Maddie um, wraps up, that could be awesome. Oh yeah. Great. That's a great idea. And then maybe we'll hop, each of us and you can all say ours too. Um, but yeah, I wanted to thank you guys all for coming to this meeting. As you can see, we're recording this. We'll be putting this on our Instagram and website uh, just so you can all look back at this and see the tools that Angie said. Um, but I wanted to thank you, guys, thank again you specifically, Angie. This was an amazing presentation, a great way to start off this um, Sunday for the Mental Health Awareness Month for it being May. Um, as I said earlier in the week, uh, earlier in the meeting, we're going to be having these for the next two weeks um, to represent the different facets of the counseling center. So as we've talked about, we have the therapists, the counseling center, you know, going in for therapy. We also have the peer coach program, which are um, grad upper 
upper students, graduate students who are learning to become, you know, counselors, therapists. Um, so we have a peer coach program that has a bunch of different groups within that they have their own groups that they're keeping up throughout the semester. So next week we'll be hearing from Michelle Thorpe. She's uh, one of the peer coach in the peer coach program and she's going to be coming talking to us just like how Angie did on the Wednesday at 11 for about 10 to 15 minutes. We'll be having a little live stream video on our Instagram, uh, You Matter Chico State. And we'll be talking about a little bit about what we'll be talking about more in depth on Sunday. So again, next Sunday from 11 to 12, kind of like this Sunday, we'll be having um, a cool one hour talk with Michelle. We'll be talking about the peer coach program, different ways to get involved with the peer coach program, the different groups and stuff, and then even um, applications because we are opening applications for peer coach programs. Um, and then lastly, the last group within the Counseling Center is the U Matter program, which is what I'm a part of, the U Matter intern internship. Um, so again, on that Wednesday from 11 to 1115-ish on the U Matter Chico State website, uh, Instagram page, we'll be having a live stream featuring me and then a couple of the interns that we have to be speaking with us. Um, and then again, on that Sunday from 11 a.m. to 12, we'll be having an hour-long talk with the UMatter interns, um, talking about their experiences, what they've learned, what they've taken back, and what they've, you know, wanted to um, provide for others. Also, we want to be talking about how this is a, an internship that will be continuing next semester, and there is an application process that will be open, and we'll be talking about how to be become a part of this group. Um, and then, of course, answering any questions we have about this whole process. Um, do we have any questions about that before we close up for the rest of this today? Um, okay. No questions, but thank you for organizing this event, Matt. You've done a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you guys so much for coming. Um, it's been a pleasure, and then hopefully we'll see you all back next when, next sun, Sunday at our next Zoom meeting. Okay, well, thank you guys so much. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you, guys. Bye, thank you.